What's up, everybody? I am coming to the Brea Improv. I will be there October 13, 14, 15 outside Los Angeles. We got a Thursday, we got a Friday, Saturday, Sunday shows. ChristyComedy.com for Tiki Wikis. Then October 18th, La Vista, Nevada. The 19th, Kansas City. The 20th, St. Louis. The 21st, Hammond, Indiana. And then October 26th to the 28th, Raleigh, North Carolina, the capital. All tickets at ChristyComedy.com. For the love of God, buy a goddamn ticket. What's up, guys? Real quick, tour dates are on sale right now at SalVolcanoComedy.com. Uh, there's tons of cities up there. Tomorrow night, if you're watching this right now on Hey Babe, tomorrow night I am in Bro Bowling Green, Kentucky on Friday, Cincinnati on Saturday, and Toledo on Sunday. There's still some tickets available, so get those. Uh, following that, we're going to be in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, and Wilmington, Delaware. Then we're doing Macon, Savannah, and Athens, Georgia, and so on and so forth. There's a big Illinois run in November leading up to my comedy special at the Vic in Chicago on December 1st and 2nd. The second sold out, as you guys I hopefully know, uh, and so we added two shows on the first. All will be taped, and all, if you have a ticket to all, any of those shows, you'll be eligible to win uh, a flight, hotel, and trip to the set of Impractical Jokers. I'm choosing one ticket out of those four shows. Uh, December 1st is still on sale right now, but it's going fast. SalVolcanoComedy.com. Hope to see you guys on the road. Don't be a flake, don't run away from your feelings, babe. Don't be afraid, don't be ashamed, don't hesitate to say, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe. It's Thursday, and you know what that means. Everyone loves hey, babes. Now, scissor man. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Hello. How'd you like Anthony Bowens one more time? Scissor me, daddy. Ah, uh, let's do it. Oh. Uh, uh, you know wrestling? <laughs> uh, I know old school wrestling. Yeah. Okay. And I know The Rock. I don't know. The new guys I don't really know so well. <laughs> yeah. We uh, we have our, our friend Anthony Bowens. He, he opens up uh, every podcast and... Uh, He's famous for a move uh, where he's an, he's openly gay wrestler, which is which was. Uh, I don't think that has anything to do with the scissoring, though. I feel like. Do you think a straight guy would would scissor? I, the way it came about was just them messing around on. I think, and then they just ran with it. Remember the old school stuff. Well, I don't when think we were it, kids to do this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, we should say we have our friend and historical comedian Joe Bartnick on with us today. Uh, what's happening, Sal? Chris, how you doing? Joe Bartnick. Love you, buddy. Great Racially you. ambiguous. Joe Bartnick. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm half Italian, half mutt. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. Because you could be Middle Eastern, you could be Italian, you could be a French. You, it, you should you should be an actor because you can adapt. To, I could see all of it. Yes. I am. I But I'm always typecast, you know. I always do play an Italian in some way. Okay. Like a deli worker or a thug. Or okay. A, <laughs> but right. I can't. Because I can only be myself. Yeah. Acting is hard. Yeah. Just being yourself, which I think most actors are just themselves. A right? version of? A version of themselves. I think like that's, yeah, the best actors, I think that they just bring their mannerisms and quirks to any um, any uh, character. I, I Do you think you're a good actor, Sal? Mm, I don't think so. I think in some instances, yes, and in some instances, absolutely not. Yeah, we don't think so either. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I've never actually seen you act, but see, I would think that you would be a good actor from all the work you've done on the show no, that, I, that would translate nicely to acting. In, in some instances, I can pull it off, but in, in some, I, 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 I feel insecure and don't think I'm, I'm good at things. That, I've never had like a lesson or any training or anything like that. The really hardest thing about acting is knowing the words good enough to act. Yes. Right. And I have such low... Um, memory skills. Yeah. I, the whole time, I'm just what are the, what are the fuck words? Right, right. right. So when I finally know them, <laughs> right, I'm okay. It's like any time I'm acting where it's like a thing where it's like a Larry. I've not been on a Larry David show, but where it's like just get to this kind of gist and make sure you get this out. Yes. Then I'm perfect. Me too. But when it's like. You know, I don't talk Do like a like regular person. I yes. don't use sentences. So it's like using a full <laughs> sentence. Use sentences. Yeah, you know what I mean? No, like even in my act, it's like I just talk in like spurts. Yeah. So when it's like a long run on sentence, it's like I run out of breath. Right. That's when I have the problem. When it's either like when it's like something that's really specific and the way it's written, I, I don't feel like it's natural. I have a hard time there. But if, if you like let me improvise or something, then I'm better. Exactly. It's really hard to be natural when it's not something you would be. Right. Right. Now, Joe's got a special out called A Killing in Chicago. Yes. It's out right now. And um, what was that? Yeah, what was that? The intro was just hilarious. <laughs> that is the intro. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Can, can you put yeah, it on? Yeah, just put it on. Yeah, I was just, I was, I was watching. So, who's that guy? <laughs> Club Soda Kenny. Oh, this is so funny, dude. 
By the way, we just can you restart it? Can you, we we just but we moved. If you if you're wondering what's going on here, we we moved out of the other studio because there was construction going on, and there still is construction going on. <laughs> right. But it's just not right outside right. our our wall. But uh, you might still hear it. But we, we, yeah, we'll do we what thought we can. it'd be 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 best for uh, the listener if we moved. Just give you a little bit less construction noises. So bear with. We could have Fine. canceled today, but we didn't want to. Yes. So just make believe it's part of the fun. Yes. Here we go. This is already the best intro to a special I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> Thank you. It really is. I mean, what a mustache. Great mustache. Oh, dude, this is unreal. Rocks it. Because for as much as I want to say, oh, specials are just about the jokes, and they are, adding stuff like this that's cool and dope and different makes me already back. I want to watch this thing now. I mean, I love this. I'm not just saying that. Joe's Thank a guy you, you don't want to fight. No. Joe's a guy you don't want to fight. That's just a man. Yeah, you, know? you are a regular man. Like you're a man. When I grew, when I was little, and I looked up, like, and I and I looked up, and I said, "Oh, look at that man! You're that man." Joe was stronger than the both of us when he was seven. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. You think you can beat up Club Soda Kenny? He's a big guy too. No, I miss Club Soda Kenny. I almost died with that Cadillac though, like three times. I almost ran over the crew. No really? Way. Yeah, the brakes didn't work. Oh shit! Look at that. <laughs> there he is, dude. This is unreal. This was a. I mean, this is a to do. Did Bill Burr direct this? Uh, no, his buddy directed, my buddy Ben Tischler. Shout out Ben Tischler. Happy Yom Kippur, belated. Oh, that's so fun. That's so good. <laughs> dude, and you really nailed the aesthetic and everything. Yeah, Thank you. I mean, yeah. Where'd you film it? In Chicago? Uh, it's at the Den Theater we filmed it in Which Chicago. Is awesome venue, we've heard. Yeah, yeah, it's right? incredible venue. And uh, my fans actually broke the liquor record. Two sold out shows. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I could have told you that. Yeah. <laughs> the writing was on the wall there. <laughs> But it was great. I, I, obviously, the other scenes were filmed in L.A., but we shot for four days, and we wrote... I, I'm like, well, we're going to set everything up. Let's shoot some sketches. And we were originally going to put the sketches, make it really like a Quinn Barton production, where yeah. after like 12 minutes, like act one. And yeah. a couple of sketches. But everyone felt like, oh, this stand-up is strong. Just let the stand-up roll. So at the end, you'll see like three or four sketches. Yeah. Um, yeah it'd be oh, like, you, you tagged them on? Yeah, like next week on Bartnick. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's really, really cool. I de whose idea was it? The whole thing was my idea. Amazing, dude. So I just and Bill. I grew up on that television. Exactly. I mean, I, that's the only shows I still watch. Yeah. Are basically, like me TV, Antenna TV, right? Uh, all those yeah. ones. I watch Kojak, The Untouchables. Yeah. Those are my. Those are the best ones. So I wanted to do that. And where's it's on All Things Comedy YouTube. All Things Comedy YouTube page. Yes. All Things Comedy YouTube page. Great, great uh, people over at All Things Comedy. When's the last time you've gone to a fist fight? Oh man, that's a. It's been a while. Uh, you know, because I, I was just thinking about that today. I think if you get into a fight after like you're in high school, there's a problem. Yeah. Right. Like unless it's like against basically I'll, I'll get in more almost fights because of my dogs. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Like, when, like I'm in, I'll be in New York for four months in a row like before the pandemic and never once have a terse word for anybody. Someone's car rolls up quick on my dog. It's like, I'm going to kill everybody <laughs> yeah. in the car. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I feel like you're a guy who, at times, well, you probably did get into a lot of fist fights. You have you have a guy reformed energy. You know what I mean? Yeah, by I, that? Would, I would describe you as a bruiser. As a bruiser. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not a good technically sound wrestler. I'm a brawler. Brawler. Right. Broad, right. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I want you on my hockey line. Yeah, well, you know? exactly. Yeah. You know, I always played defense, even though I was terrible at skating backwards. Just, just so I could punish people. Right. You know, I, I basically, you know, I've always kind of used my body for uh, my money. You know, either like right. either either just bouncing or you know doing other stuff. So right. it's like you know that's all. You don't have too many skills, so I can make a Manhattan and uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know that's tell, a skill. Well, you're very tough. Tell some dick jokes. That's about. That's why I got to do comedy. What else can I do? Every time I every time I, I I think about you or I see your name, I think about I don't I don't think it was you that told me. It was somebody who told me that one? I think it was Pittsburgh Steelers. You were in the park lot. It could be Pittsburgh Steelers or Buffalo Bills game, and you pissed out a kidney stone. Oh, that was at the Rose Bowl. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you and you didn't go to. <laughs> Shit. That's one of the reasons why I'm the Rose Bowl legend. I have like five Rose Bowl stories and tailgating that are just insanity. Because we, we, you know, I've heard that a kidney stone is the most horrific pain a man can go through, and you pissed it out, let it hit off the back of the porta potty, and continued hanging out at that game. I. Uh, Pretty much close to that story. Basically, I, you know, had like, you know, you start out like six in the morning. So I had like 10 beers. I, I had to suck it up. Usually I just wait till everyone leaves the parking lot, then piss by somebody's car. And then I, right. porta potties ruin my buzz. Like, I'll, yeah. I'll go home. 
yeah. to take his shit. I don't care if it's the Rolling Stones and Jesus Christ. Like, I'm not going to be in a porta potty right, right, show. Right. So, yeah, it'd be tough. Who, who's following who? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Well, I mean, Jesus got to get closer, <laughs> right. but you got to follow satisfaction. They're both opening for, ta- they're both opening for Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> but so I'm like, I, I, I got to suck it up and go. And I'm literally just in the porta potty. Imagine a porta potty, the sun beating down, just for like. Ugh. I mean, it could have been. It's probably twelve minutes. It felt like six hours. Wow! And I just couldn't. You knew what was happening. I, I I didn't know what was going on. I'm just like. Then I come back to the porta potty. Everyone's like, "You're green, dude." I'm like, "I don't feel good." And then and I've and then uh, and my Rose Bowl friends are like my best buddies, like Burr and a couple other guys. And they're just like. <laughs> so they usually they, they've seen me messed up. They're like we've never seen you like this before. And I literally just like leaning against a car. Just, you were in pain. You were in real pain. Oh my god! Where Com- was the pain? All over the side of my body and just oh. my, just so sick. To, I was like sick to death. And then I'm, just, I'm like I'm no. If I could just go to the bathroom, I would feel okay. So then I'm just standing. So finally, like, most of the people went in. I just went behind the car and just just sat there, sat there, sat there, sat there. And all of a sudden, like I felt like just the release of like a like. Just like 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 a balloon popped, and I literally swear, at least in my mind, I, I heard a pebble hit the side of a tire because I wow. know exactly where I was pissing this guy's tires. Right. And it, bing, f that guy. I, I was like, and I come yeah. back, and they're like, "You okay?" I'm like, "Yeah, dude, I feel amazing now." And I went into the game. What? Do you understand how crazy that is? So, like, people yeah. would be hospital hospitalized. They liken it to childbirth. Don't Sergio they? Chacon is 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 a good friend of mine, great comic, um, one of the toughest guys I know outside of you. He and he had a kidney stone, and he was almost had to go to the hospital because he was like, I can't deal with this. And this guy used to beat up drug dealers with his fists. And and I'm like, and so for you to just walk back into a a, a football game to me is <laughs> yeah. nuts. I, I mean, just I'll be right back. Like you that. You could have been there, went and got a hot dog and, and, and like a beer and come back. And that would have been the same amount of time that you left and passed. The, is it kidney or gall? Kidney. Uh, it was a kidney stone. What's the difference? Well, gallbladder is in your, in your gall. And I don't, go, the thing with the gallbladder is it's like a fake heart attack. So a lot of people, they think, yes. oh, I'm going to have a heart attack. And they go to the hospital and like, no, your gallbladder is messed up. Oh, you don't pass in a stone with a, a gall? Gall stone. stone. That kidney I don't stones know. and gall stones are different organs. Was that that? Did you shit? My dad hasn't shit in two and a half weeks. So what we're waiting we're waiting yeah. for it oh my god mix in mix in a salad buddy yes you know go go to the, go to the rose bowl that's what you'll get it out just out of porta potty so yeah. so you didn't know what was happening while this was happening you didn't know what it was no i mean i just felt completely sick and it just like i mean i couldn't go to the bathroom for i mean imagine just you so what was running through your head like what were your guesses as to what was going on uh my guesses were just like I, I, don't, I, mean, I was out. Of, I was out of guesses. I just knew I had to go to the bathroom really bad, but I couldn't go. Something was blocked. Right, it. and you were inebriated. No, I had a good buzz. Okay, but, I it, was, but it was wasted. like it wasn't like a holy shit. I got to pee so bad because I drank beers too. Yeah, was, that too. Oh, that sensation too. Well, so, so think about that sensation if you're drinking. Let's call it ten beers. You, you guys know. I mean, how much you have to pee to not be able to get that out had to be in, just it, that right there. The panic that would set. Yeah, me, I would have passed out. It might have been the thing that saved you. Because you had such a powerful stream backed up. It was. That it helped you to shoot it out. It was a power. I mean, it was just like, it was, I'm telling you, it was like someone turned on a spigot. Like, yeah. Like, like it would have like, like, like oh the my God, listener. I felt so good. I felt, I felt so much, I felt so much better. Yeah. You could have took somebody's eye out. I bet with that. hundred <laughs> percent. If you were in like a, an enclosed room, you would hear like, ding, 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 ding. Is that a kidney stone? Is that the world's largest kidney stone? Bartnick, you think it was something like this? No, 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 no. I mean, it was, it was like the si- it was like the size of like a baby tooth. Okay, I, I have a two year old, so I'm, I I can. You know what that. I mean? That little yeah. bit, you know, when you yeah, say a like, little, a little like, teeth like for there. the tooth fairy. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. But just that enough was enough to cause you to you a guy who's as strong as an ox. Oh to yeah, be like, no, I'm it hurts. On the floor. It hurts. I take a lot of pain between all my surge. I've had seven surgeries, had a heart attack. Like I, I never was. In Jesus the, Christ! Heart no. attack? I was never even in the NFL. Like there's no <laughs> right, reason right. I should have this many surgeries. Wow. Why did you have a heart attack? We didn't know oh, you had a right, heart attack. Right. Uh, I had a, this is so funny because my heart was messed up. I, I feel like I'm doing like a medical, I feel like I'm on the Lifetime channel. Yes. <laughs> I'm, well, sorry. Well, I'm sorry. I feel like such an old man. Joe, what happened this time? Well, welcome it, was to the, hey, it was the AFC championships. He he just went out for yeah, a second, yeah. had a hard time, came this, back in. This is, the, this is the podcast that all our fellow podcasters' moms listen to. Oh, okay. We're for the moms. <laughs> uh, mom, mom, moms love me. <laughs> but now, because I'm past the daughter phase now. Now, now, now chicks are like, yo, yeah, you, you remind me of my uncle. 
Oh. That's like, I'm done. Yeah, you're done. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. So, what, so when did you have a heart attack? We didn't know uh, anything well, about right that. Well, right before, like, like, like six weeks into the real pandemic, or like a month into the real pandemic. But I got, I had the, I got, I'm pretty sure I got <laughs> the real recently, pandemic. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I had the, I'm pretty sure I had the OG. Uh, the OG COVID, COVID, because I was with Jimmy Big Balls. Remember Jimmy Big sure, Balls? Of course. He was in the hospital for two weeks. I, I prayed for him, Whoa. Right? and he lived. Because when I came home with it, shout out Jimmy Big Balls. Shout out Jimmy Big Balls. When I, when I came home with it, I gave it to Verzi and his family. I gave it to Verzi because he was staying at my house, mm-hmm. and then he brought it back to his family. But the thing with the heart, though, and I just didn't feel good for like two weeks. But I, you know, obviously I lived. But the thing with my heart was that whole fall, my chest is sore. My, my chest is sore. My wife's like, "You're you're 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 doing karate with a bunch of black belts that weigh two hundred and fifty pounds. You're kicking your chest four yeah. days a week. That's yeah. why your, that's why your chest hurts." I'm right. like, oh, "Okay." They go to New York. That was you. happening in addition to you having the heart attack. That, that was, ha- you that was already it. having a mild heart yeah, attack, yeah, and it kept kicking. Yeah, that, that, was, that was happening. <laughs> Instead of thinking, "Oh, you know what? I'm, I'm fifty. Maybe I'm really should have my heart checked." <laughs> right. That then I go, uh, so then I go to New York, I'm, and I think I'm just sleeping on Gino's couch crooked. I'm like, yeah, my chest still hurts for like six weeks. And then, I, and then I was home, and then Friday night, it was a Friday night, I'm just like, and I'm like, I can't do nothing, I can't do nothing. And my wife's like, you want to call the ambulance? And I'm like, no, because if just Jimmy Big Balls just got out. I'm like, I'm not going to the hospital, I'll never come out. Right, 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 right. right. So I'm like, no. And then I, I calmed down. Then my we were still doing karate in my backyard and drinking beers. On the, and then uh, my, my sensei's like, oh, we coming over tomorrow. I go, we can drink. I ain't fucking around. I don't feel good. Wait, and then Sunday, <laughs> I had more, another one. And then Monday, my wife said, you're calling the doctor. I called the doctor because I'm making an appointment for you. I went and saw the heart guy. Wednesday, I went in. They scoped me all out. And that's that. Oh, this is, you're, you're, you're a marvel. Right. You're a human marvel. He walked off but, a heart attack. Yeah, he, you I, had yeah, a, I, I feel like an ice cream headache. <laughs> you, 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 you had a three-day extensive heart attack that was jump-started by black belts kicking you in the chest. Yes. You waited. You had over the course of three days. You were having a heart attack. Yes. Then you went in. You just got scoped out and just left. It was in. It was outpatient. Yeah. Well, they had to see what it was. And basically, I, I I'll confirm. But so I don't say nurse is giving you hate mail. Um, I have what they call coronary artery spasms, okay. which is like heart attack is like you're clogged. Mine is like my heart just gave out and they could see all the scar tissue around it. You know, like when your leg cramps from playing too much basketball, yes. yeah. that's basically what happened to my heart. It just gave out. Okay. But they scoped you. They, they cleaned you up and now you're good. Uh, back yeah. To you know, the, the, the biggest thing was, was I got a CPAP machine now, so I don't wear my heart out constantly. CPAP. Isn't it the CPAP. greatest thing? I, I, I've been wearing it for like 20 years now. Oh, because... I, I'm like, oh my God, I'd be so much further in life if I wasn't tired all day. Yeah. Right. It's an amazing thing. I know. It's so you didn't even realize you had life. anything. You thought you were sleeping eight hours every night. I was, but I was <laughs> I'd take two hour naps and it's like you just you you're tired all day and my snoring was legendary. <laughs> this is it. Legendary. Right More legendary than your kidney stones. They say if you listen closely, you can still hear it. <laughs> <laughs> so the CPAP machine, now you sleep. When you wake up, you are rested. I am ready to rock and roll. I can just sleep for like four hours and just be ready to rock and roll. Yeah, it's wow. it's life changing because you don't realize how much you're not sleeping. You too? CPAP machine changed oh, your life. I couldn't even keep my eyes open. I, I, I was having trouble driving because I was falling asleep, like I was getting tired behind the wheel. In class, all that stuff, and and then uh, you know I didn't want to do it. I put it off. Who wants to go to sleep with a freaking fighter pilot mask on every night? <laughs> you know. Right. And then I went to the hospital, and they had this like fake bedroom <laughs> where I went to the sleep center, and I slept there. And, and they uh, were like hundred percent. They were like, yeah, it's like, it's bad. Hello, Fresh America's number, number one, one meal kit. Okay. Yes. With Hello Fresh, you get farm fresh pre portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store. Count on Hello Fresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number Hello one. Hello Fresh, because you know what? They do all the shopping and meal planning for you. They're like my stepmom, they do it all. Ingredients arrive at your doorstep, pre portioned and ready to cook along with pictured step-by-step recipe cards. How easy is that? They show you pictures, Sal. I know. And by the way, my fall schedule, which we just talked about, is jam-packed. It is. And HelloFresh makes whipping up a home-cooked meal, I mean, come on, let's be honest, uh, actually doable. They have quick and easy options, including 15-minute meals, and that's less time than it takes to get the actual delivery, if we're being honest. And fall, baby, you know me, with fall, they got a little putting cheesecake. 
Pumpkin pie cheesecake. I'm, it's it's. Wonderful. I love pumpkin cheesecake. I didn't cook until I found HelloFresh. Dude, go to HelloFresh.com slash five zero Hey Babe and use code five zero Hey Babe for fifty percent off plus free shipping. Let me say it. Yeah. Go to HelloFresh.com slash fifty Hey Babe and use the code five zero Hey Babe for fifty percent off plus free shipping. HelloFresh. America's, America's number, number one, one meal kit. kit. Game time. Hoo, hoo. <laughs> game time. Hoo, hoo. Uh, we love the Game Time app. We use the Game Time app. You got to go to gametime.co, not com. Gametime.co. It's last minute tickets at the best prices, guaranteed. A lot of good features. Views from your seats. Best price guarantee. You get uh, easy to find tickets for every kind of event in your area. They literally. Do the lowest price guarantee, and they prove it with that because with the game time guarantee, it means you will always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. That's absolutely right. Uh, it is. <laughs> and this flash deals is like last minute deals. And this is something I didn't see, but the zone deals is where you pick the section, game time picks the seats, and that's going to be an average of 20% savings every time. I love it. Take the guesswork. Out of take the guesswork out of buying tickets, man. And they got every sport: football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. Yes. Right. Find tickets for us. Use the Game Time app. If you can't find, if we're sold out, find the tickets for us. Um, right now, all you have to do is download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Hey Babe for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account. Redeem the code H E Y B A B E for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Yeah. So I got it, and I, you know, but I, it's annoying because I, we have to, like, we, perfect. You travel with it. It's like, dude, now that those weekend carry on bags yeah. become so tough for real estate. <laughs> Yeah, that that's like, so true, uh, right? Oh my god, that's why I had to bring my rolling bag this time. I hate a rolling bag in New York, but it's like. Or I can't bring my sh a second pair of shoes. Something gets sacrificed. Yeah, something yes. gets sacrificed. I have the mini travel one, which is fantastic. Yeah, but it's still yeah. Oh, I have I have that one too, but it still takes up enough where it's like for a backpack. It's that extra level of like, yep. well, now I can't bring this. Yep, yep. It's yep. Usually or my, I can't buy this and bring it home or something like do that. Do you have too. to take the CPAP machine out through uh, security if you don't have TSA or whatever? Yeah. Right, right. No, but I mean you gotta have TSA. Yeah, but sometimes they'll give you the thing of like shoes. Fine, take everything out still. So it's like, including and then they, the CPAP? Yeah, and then they want you to unzip it out of the thing. So everyone just standing there, you're taking out your laptop, you're unzipping the thing, there's hoses everywhere. Yeah. yeah. You'd be like, like a moron. I don't know. I've never had to take I've never had to take it out. Yeah. I but I also have the, the pre whatever, so I don't know. But even when I didn't have all the bells or whatever, that sign's closed, which is usually like when you're yeah. really in a hurry. Yeah. The pre check yeah. isn't open. No, they oh, say yeah. <laughs> I've never had to show that, you know. Okay. So when did you start getting on the CPAP machine? How long uh, like a, like a, like a two weeks after my heart attack because they rushed it through because right. like this guy needs it because right. I still feel, I mean I was feeling terrible. The best was recovering from it was like they just gave me all these heart pills and it's in the pandemic. I had nothing to do but just sit in my backyard and drink beers and like listen to tunes. I was yeah. like I'm alive. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. This is the Almond Brothers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, just it was like little ecstasy, like yeah, you know. And then it really helped my pandemic because. I didn't really. I felt like I was like terrible until like July. I only had one month of freaking out. Right. Where like, what am I going to do? Am I funny? I, nothing's funny. I, uh, is the world shut down? What's going on? And then like Labor Day happened. The comedy club in San Diego called me and said, "You want to be our first headliner back?" I said, "Sure." Ventura opened up at both outside shows, but like you know, in their little section. And then we went to go smoke cigars. Me and Bert and a couple other people at the American Legion. And I'm like, you know what? I don't feel like smoking. It's when all the fires were in L.A. Oh yeah. And he's like, man. You still can't breathe. He's like, come back east with me. Yeah. And then they built all these little wood stocks around for Bill to perform outside. Wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all through New England. Like, they're yeah. like, hey, here's a tent. Go perform and we'll put people on the lawn. Yeah. And then Florida opened up and then Texas opened up. So I never really had that big, like, I haven't been on stage in three years. You were I only had like a month of realizing oh, wow. it. Wow. Because right, I was right. just you were like, going. Yeah. Interesting. Did I catch earlier that you said that your sensei, and other black belts come to your yard to train, and then you also drink beers? Well, that's that sounds like the coolest thing I've ever heard. Cobra Kai. He's like, my sensei <laughs> called me up, all my black belt friends. We go in my yard, we drink beers, we smash freaking, you know. Well, they're like black belts and brown belts, and, I, and, and I'm on like a purple belt. And they just like, I had a nice big backyard so they can like train and 
you'd have, have a couple drinks. That's pretty cool that you that yeah. You're, That's it's awesome. Like, it's like you're in a, like it's it's like you just describe when you're a kid what you think you, the dream would be to do when you get older. Like I'm gonna learn karate. I'm gonna my friends learn karate. We're gonna go in my backyard, just do karate all day. We'll just drink. We'll do karate. You know? <laughs> it's just like, it it's so the, funny. It's like, it, someone calls the house. And she's like, oh, he's in the yard doing karate with his friends. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it, it did kind of save it did kind of save me mentally because we live we move out. I'm a city kid. We move out to the suburbs. And it's just like, then there's like nothing going on. Yeah. And it's like they drive out 45 minutes into Hollywood every night just to like hang out and do a 10 minute set. Yeah. You know, LA. Yeah. No one's, it's not like New York. Camp. People hanging out, boozing, you're going for a slice, you're doing this. Yeah. So I'm just like, you know, it turns into the shining real quick where I live. So, <laughs> right. so, so it's cool to have like three blocks away is my dojo where oh, I go awesome. like four days a week and, you know, just hit, hit, screw around and hit the bag a little bit and when you know, feel normal. Yeah. When did you start up with this karate? Oh, just like, uh, I actually don't even do it anymore because uh, for many issues. But uh, I don't know, six six years ago. Oh wow, it's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting too. Like people, like there's a story about Anthony Bourdain became like a black belt in jujitsu, like after his fiftieth birthday. It's like you think that you kind of like. I always thought. By the way, I want to just say something because I said on a podcast, I forgot whose podcast I said, but I said, <laughs> I said, listen, if you're over twelve years old and you still do jujitsu, you're a fuck. Loser, and and uh, <laughs> that's and not a healthy you got thing the to whole say. Mixed martial <laughs> arts, mixed martial arts. Is the good yeah, and obviously I was kidding. Every day, multiple times a day, grown men who are jujitsu masters <laughs> are like, "Say that to my face." I'm coming to your show. They are serious. I do comedy. I'm joking. I was just saying that my kids do jujitsu, and it's fun. It's nice. But I was kind of trying to say, if I didn't know jujitsu by the time I was 15, I just wouldn't pick up jujitsu. But I'm, I was just doing comedy. So there's no reason to practice your jujitsu on me if you come to my shows. <laughs> <laughs> and let's let that lie right there. Yeah, you know what's funny? Uh, whether they continue or not, I was just thinking of this. that is so funny. Yeah, that's a fucking kill. They they crush every day in the DMs. They like want to kill me because I said you did compare it to gymnastics. What did I say? What do you remember? What I said exactly? You said um, <laughs> jujitsu is the new gymnastics. Okay. That it's like for like you were very kid. disrespectful, yeah. Right, I was very <laughs> there was very to the jujitsu community. It was something for kids to do in between napping. Right, right. Whatever I said, I think it was funny, but I, it was I great. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, so I I live by the comedy of it. I stand by the comedy of it. Do you know? Do you know that whether they continue on with jujitsu or not? Like let's say Delilah, if she continues on with it, or even not. But this is what made me think of it. There's going to be a day in your life. It'll it'll there will be a day where she could take you out. A hundred percent. Isn't that crazy? A hundred percent. Yeah, she's she can- 30, 30 years your junior. Junior. And and you know, you're a big guy. She's a, she's a female, but there's still gonna be a day yeah. where you, you can't talk shit to her. No, she will take you out. Beat the shit out of her. Take you me. down to Chinatown. Oh, my yeah. daughter can kick my ass. Really? Really? Yeah, she's two belts ahead of me and she's big and strong and she is just focused. And my one black belt buddy John, he's a black belt in in, in jujitsu and my Kempo karate and he boxes and, Damn. And, and he's a drinker. He always comes over and uh, he'll get a little saucy with my daughter. I'm like, D- John, don't ruin your buzz. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. So always do some shit. And then my, and then uh, I call my daughter the boo and the boo will just like get him. Like the boo? That, yeah. The boo. I like and, that. And it's like, it's like, that's it. The boo gotcha. I'm like, don't ruin your buzz. <laughs> yeah. Cause I'm always going to have a pops. And then they'll like, start screwing around boo. And I'm like, she's going to ruin your buzz, dude. <laughs> Yeah, Good old big black belt, John. But I think it's perfect. <laughs> your daughter. I think all women should know how to defend themselves. Yes, yeah. all men should too. But it's not as big a deal. But women should know how to defend themselves. Hundred percent. That's why I have my daughters in jujitsu. They don't love it as much as I was hoping. But I'm gonna just keep pushing them because that that's the same thing I think. It's like at least know how to do something. Yeah, defend yourself. We're all wearing New Balances, by the way. Hey, New Balance, New Balance has made the. I've I've said this before. They're they're catching up to Nike. Probably not in sales, but I'm just saying a lot of people are for the over fifty five crowd. No, but now young people, <laughs> everybody's got New Balance. Pimp, aren't is aren't New Balances lit I've with had, the kids? I've had New Balance for many, 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 many years though. Yeah, I think they picked up Jack Harlow as their their. Face. Oh, I have seen that ad. Yeah, is that what it was the best. The, the, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. How long have you been wearing New Balances? My first pair of New Balances, probably. I mean, it's got to be twenty plus years. These though. the end. Look. This one came with like 50 different ends, and you could change the colors. You take the end off. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Velcro. But tell the audio audience what's going on. I think this is a Ronnie. I just Velcro. I just, uh, I just undid 
sells Velcro shoes. He's got Velcro shoes like he's an eight-year-old doing jujitsu because <laughs> it's only for kids. <laughs> <laughs> You just you just turned on the people that get turned on by sounds oh, too. Yeah. Oh that, my that, that, that. Oh, okay, ready for you people that do the a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a there, there you go. The construction stopped, I think. Oh, my God. People are coming left and right right now. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine somebody definitely just blew a load in, like, Minneapolis. <laughs> How many different colors they give you for the end? Uh, it was, like, good a good dozen plus because it's all because it's or maybe like 10 but it's like uh for both sides and then both shoes. So oh, so came four like times. A, a cool stack of them. I was like, this is fun. Did they sponsor you? No. Oh no! I just you just bought them like that, and they came with all those ends. What are they? Five, seven, fours. I like them. Yeah, this is it's an older shoe. I don't know if it still exists, but that's what sold Yo, your me. shoe always fucked. <laughs> <laughs> that's what sold me. I had mine's four eighty. What number do you have, Barney? I don't know. What actually. numbers do you got? Five one five. What are the difference between all the numbers? No clue. No clue. Nobody knows. Nobody Se knows. Secret sauce. I love New Balances. I, their their thing is they they make a statement. The, the color schemes. Yes. So I kind of just like to have like a, a neutral color because I can wear them a couple days in a row. Right. Yeah. I'm not one of these guys that has like nine pairs of shoes. So I kind of like to have a color that kind of goes with everything. Yeah. Sometimes like that green goes against what I'm wearing, but what, what can you do? I'm Absolutely. Bringing nine shoes. Yeah. I, I, I have my CPAP machine. I can't bring four pairs of shoes. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like a nice when I'm on the road, I like to bring like just a pair of black shoes because like you said, it goes with everything. I also now I'm at the point because we travel so much. I used to try to bring three pairs of shoes, five different outfits. I bring one pair of pants, three or four different shirts, one pair of shoes, and stuff to work out in, and that's it. And I don't care if I wear the same thing two times in a row. Pictures, I don't care. Same. I stripped it down. I, I wear the shoes care. on my feet now. That's it. That's exactly. It. Yeah. And the one one pair of pants, one pair of shorts, and that's it. And then three shirts. And sometimes I like, I'm like, if I if the shit hits the fan, I'll wear the shirt from the first day just to drive home or to fly. Yeah, home. who cares? Yeah. I, I usually bring it back a pair of pants if there's two shows because you know I'm gonna be out boozing the night right, after. Right, right, right. So if you spill something, it's like I got to have a backup. Pair. I hear that. I hear that. <laughs> I mean, I'd rather I'll wash my pants in the sink. I've washed my pants in the hotel sink many times. Really? Oh yeah. I've never done that a single time. Really? Many times. Oh yeah. I always <laughs> wash my. I, not you know, always, what? but if I go out boozing or I have a, I get like ketchup on my pants from like a brunch or something. Oh, taking I'll, out a stain is. Different. I'll wash them in the sink. I pictured you, however, standing over like a washboard. <laughs> That's my dad. My dad saying something. <laughs> Your dad's whispering something to me. What are you saying, Dad? Just scream it. You wash your pants in the sink. That's true. I do wash my pants in the sink. I do wash my pants in the sink. Yes, the my dad. My dad's confirmed the truth of that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you a question: Is this overdoing? Because you were talking about learning self-defense. For my lady, I, I I get nervous, so I got her pepper spray. Right, okay. so that's no big deal. She carries pepper spray on her, and she has the pepper spray, and it is what it is. Recently, I'm like, what if the pepper spray malfunctions? What if uh, it's some guy and the big dude or something, like that, and the pepper spray doesn't, you know bother that person so i'm now in the process of getting her a stun gun wow now she told me i'm okay. crazy and that she's not going to carry around a stun gun and it's it's small and i said well why not like why am i crazy like what if you you'll ne hopefully you'll never need it but if you ever did need it wouldn't you rather have it than not i agree and she's like i've walked around my whole life without this stuff now you want me to carry pepper spray and a stun gun i'm like yeah, but like I don't see the big deal. But she said I was going overboard. We're living in a more dangerous city than when she was growing up. That New York has gotten has returned to some previous danger as it used to was. I think she needs a stun gun. Dad, danger! Dan do you think Sal's girl needs a stun gun? Yes or no? Yes. Oh, yes. and that's coming Tampa right. Tony says yes. How's it? I've never used a stun gun. Is it easy to, to use? So I thought I was getting her. I thought it was a taser that I was getting her. Where like you know, shoot it and the things come out and someone's like, yeah, and like, <laughs> like the, that's like, what like, I thought like I was Batman getting. With like, yeah, 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 it's like <laughs> two and you, know, you know, when they just crease up and then they just keel over. Right. I wanted that. I wanted the big stuff. You know. But right. I thought she was like, but no, this is just one of those like, zzz, like, zzz, like incapacitates you. Like, so I don't know. I I, I haven't seen it. I'm, I'm getting so it's like a Norelco razor, but you touch someone and then they, right. Yeah. Right. Well, here's the thing. I thought it was going to be. I was ready to put down some money for this. I thought it was going to be like a gun a few hundred dollars yeah you want a good one not like a sharp right yeah, yeah, you get some. i i yeah. have one in the process of, of getting it i have someone delivering it and uh it was like 30 35 dollars 40 35 dollars i'm like is this thing is like a piece of shit yeah like that doesn't I, sound like it would be a good one i feel like for a stun gun should be like you know at least, a, at least 119 bucks yeah 119.99 easy 
Yeah. Here we go. Here, this guy's going to describe. Um, it seems like you still have to get pretty close. Yeah. So. Um, okay. Did you get to the pink one? No. That looks like a, literally like a razor. Yeah, that's that what looks I'm like saying. You, yeah, you shave your face with it. Yeah. Manscaping and self defense. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna have to dem. He's gonna have to demonstrate. Yeah, this looks hard. Spray a dog. What about the sack? If you're hitting the sack with that thing, you're getting really close. Five seconds. I think pepper spray is easier than this. Yeah, I like yeah. pepper spray, but you need, you need five it, seconds of it. It says. Yeah. I like you her to have the option. It. Yeah. I'd like her to have the option. Yeah. Have her pepper spray, spray. Let her, she'll determine. Yeah, because maybe if she has, if he's, if he's pepper sprayed, then he can sit there for five seconds. Right. I think you right. hit, it's a one, two combination. Hit it with the pepper spray yeah. and then stun him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's what I That's think. That's what I would do. I would spray first and then stun. Yeah. Spray and that, then stun. It happens so quick. I and think then send her for jujitsu. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Talk amongst yourself. I'm going to find a video that is not going to disappoint. I'm going to send it to Pippi and put it up there. I witnessed somebody's shoes get ripped off them on the train the other day on the way to oh, Radio City. That. Yeah. yeah. These two kids got jumped on Canal Street. And they didn't have pepper spray or stun guns. No, and the other team had knives. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 think, that, um, I think that most times when you're getting robbed or something like that, the people who are doing it are obviously not in the right state of mind. But if you hit them back, if you hit them back, I think a good percentage of them, let's say 70%, probably just will run away. They don't want the fight because most people are going to get hit and just cover up. But if you just take a few swings back, you know, I don't know. I think that even most criminals would be like, I don't want to deal with this guy. Have you ever been robbed? Uh, not physically robbed. Just digitally? Been, no. Just robbing your dignity? No. <laughs> no, like my house has been robbed a couple of times. But I haven't you, been, I have never been held up, knock on wood. But you weren't home? No. Uh, I got the It'd be a stupid move, move to try to hold you up. Pip, I'm sending you a yeah. right now that I want you to put. Yeah, I just, um, but I mean, like, I'm not going to die for a lot know. of things. You know yeah, I, mean? I don't care about anything. It's like you want to steal my, uh, just my kids and my family, but like, That's you want to take I mean, my like, sneakers, you want to take my wallet, take it all. I don't care. Take my car. Take it. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. That's what I mean. It's not worth yeah. fucking dying my or getting scarred. Please, please take it. You know. I, yeah, it's it's like these possession. What is this? Okay, now, before you hit play, I can't believe I found this on my phone. I saw this one time. I was shocked beyond belief, no pun intended, and I saved it because I had to show other people. I don't know who sent this to me or how I got it, but and I cannot believe that it took that quick to pull it up because I haven't watched it in years, but check this video out. Babe, this podcast episode sponsored by BetterHelp. Let me ask you a question, babe. Do you ever feel like your brain's getting in its own way? 24-7, 365, every second, even right now. Yep, I do too. You know what you should do. We all know what we should do, what's good for us, but we can't just do it. It's like something's blocking us. We can't do it. But therapy is the thing that helps you figure out what's holding you back so you can work for yourself instead of against yourself. That's right. And I'm just wearing these because they're prescription, not because I'm too cool. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. We say this all the time. It's entirely online, if you don't know. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, suited to your schedule. You fill out a brief questionnaire and you get matched with a therapist. You can switch therapists anytime and no additional charge. Uh, they've been with us uh, since the beginning. In and the beginning. The reason they're with us, I do believe still, is because people have been you know, you know, know, going to BetterHelp because of our podcast. 100%. We're the reason why they're still in business. It's official. <laughs> and, 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 you know, and even my father, Tampa Tony, had him on the podcast. He went to BetterHelp. I got him hooked up with there. He hadn't taken a crap in three weeks. Next thing you know, he's crapping like a two-year-old now because of the good people at BetterHelp. He didn't realize it was a mind block. It was a mind butt block, which happens to us sometimes. Make so, your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Yes. <laughs> Visit BetterHelp.com uh, slash Hey Babe. Today, you get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp. H-E-L-P dot com slash hey babe. Viator, guys. Viator has over 300,000 
bookable travel experiences in over 190 countries. They offer things from simple tours to extreme adventures and uh, even the niche stuff, interesting stuff in between. Viator is the place to go to book memorable travel experiences. If, if you're like me, uh, when I'm traveling and it's for vacation, I'm always like, where do I go to find out the cool things to do? I kind of go to the concierge or I try to get like a magazine uh, of that city. But this is even better. You go right to it and there is a list of things that you could do. So it's immediate. So it's good to have that app downloaded because it takes all the work out of figuring out what are the cool things to do in whatever city you are. Okay. Um, their travel experiences have millions of real traveler reviews. So you have the information you need to book the best activities for your trip. And that's another thing. If you land in Seattle and you go on Viator and you look at 10 things, you could also look at how people felt about that. So you feel like you're making an educated decision in case you're on the fence. Really cool. Um, Chris uses it all the time. So uh, I use it once in a while, but this guy, he he was using it before they were a sponsor, so if that tells you anything. Uh, there's always flexibility and support with free cancellation, payment options, and a 24-7 service. Download the Viator app now and use the code Viator10 for 10% off your first booking in the app. One app, over 300,000 travel experiences. You'll remember, do more with Viator. Can you get a little volume? Wait, pause, pause, Pip. I don't want it to happen. Hold on. Okay. Start from the beginning. Give us volume. Yeah. I I, I, I challenge you guys to not have a reaction to All right, this. Here. Sorry for Start the from the beginning. All right, let's go. <laughs> You're not ready. What the? Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! You have to describe. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! You have to explain to the audience what just happened. I, I, I. Someone sent me this, and I, to this day, I want to put a team of people together to investigate because yes. I don't understand <laughs> what's going on. It's a woman dancing in what looks like her own bedroom to some R and B. She's really feeling it, and then out of nowhere, she lays on her bed, on her back, spreads her legs, pulls out a stun gun, and stuns her own vagina, and knocks herself unconscious. She, she's wearing clothes, and she then literally seizes. She starts having a seizure and she just she just yeah. she stiffens up and she just falls off the bed yeah. stiff after she shocked her privates. But honestly, like something like that, it's who, like wait, who it why? makes me want to buy How? a stun gun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's but, a better ad than the chicken that's doing the sweater. <laughs> That should be Saber's new ad right there. Yeah. Just like, you know, multiple uses. Like, explain to me your explain to me how you think that came to be. I think that she's a very, very horny person, okay. and I think that she was just looking for just another way to, you know, climax. Uh, she, she's videoing it, and she's dancing normally. She's just dancing, and she's feeling it, and she's alone. The but but it just it's wild to me that she. How would you ever commit that to tape? I mean, and, and then and then it's it, and put it out there. I, and how do you how do you? How do you realize Who that was her you, editor? you can stun yourself yeah. there? How do you try that for the first time to stun yourself and then build up such a tolerance that you can hold the stun gun on it while you writhe in pain before you stiffen up and almost pass out? Yeah, that was like a fear factor test. Like, can you last more than six seconds yeah. with this in your cooch? But yeah, also, didn't it I didn't know, they, I didn't know they usually have lights on them, too. That was kind of neat. It was, like, nice. it, was, it was bedazzled. It was like the shock. That was the actual, like, uh, like the shock. Like yeah. the the electricity. <laughs> she she electrocuted. She took her. some volts, man. She, she did. Took, she took some volts. And <laughs> she took some volts. And it, what's funny to me is like when you're watching it, you don't think that you have no idea that that's what she's gonna do. She's just dancing, and then she just pulls it out and does it out of nowhere. Still yeah. to this day, one of the more, one of the craziest things I've ever seen in my entire life. The video you sent me yesterday, you DM me yesterday with the the first pitch. 
Yes. But we can't play that, right? I don't know. I mean, I know. We, was that on Instagram? Yeah. That was a good video. When he it's, sent me a picture. You've seen it. You guys have probably seen it before. When the guy <laughs> blows the first pitch so bad, he hits the cameraman in the nuts. Yeah. <laughs> and then the organ goes, damn. The funniest part is the organ, man. I never even thought about. I never even listened to the organ because you just. Yeah, guy. And they, yeah, this one, Pippi. Just play this quick and put it up full blast. Listen to the organ in this, folks. Under All the way. Andrews. That's this is the funny part of this. All right, Jordan, fire it in there. Just a bit outside. He definitely did that on purpose, yeah, right? The organ no. guy. Oh, the organ <laughs> guy. Yeah. Yo, give that organ guy a raise. A raise, yeah. That's so fun. I mean, this is a box first pitch. <laughs> Oh, those old guys watching. The guy hobbles away. <laughs> and he's like, oh, got hit right. Who is that guy? Do we know who this and guy he was is? I think he got a really chance over. to. I think he was a fan that had some type. He overcame some type of uh, illness or whatever. And, they, and so he's just a fan. You guys have thrown first. I've never thrown the first pitch. You guys have thrown the first pitch. I've been, yeah, yeah, I've yeah. been asked to, and I have I, so far You've never decided not to do it. You well, got to. I mean, you got to warm up, though, right? You do. You have to. You warm have up. to warm up. I, I don't love the possibility of. Sh I mean, on a regular day, I would throw it, but the, the, I would definitely not. Something would happen where I would. I'd be, and I'd be one of those people that in a long list of people. Here's, that here's what you do. Yeah. Here's what you do. You're gonna get flack for this. I got flack for this, Sorry. but this is what you know. When we did it, when we did it at City Field. First of all, I had my daughter run out with me, so there get sympathy right there. And then what I did was <laughs> the the guy they gave me the ball, they gave me the ball, and then I stepped off the mound and I stepped in front of the mound and I threw a perfect strike, but not from the mound. Okay. And then I then we threw a first pitch out somewhere else in Chicago and I bounced it off home plate. Or was it? Or was it the Brooklyn Cyclones? You warmed up at the Cyclone game and then went to the. But then the we mound. threw out the first pitch for the Cubs too. How that Chicago? Go? Weren't you with me? Did you come with me in the Chicago think I did theater? That one. No, 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 no. I bounced that one off home plate. Look. You want to reach, but yeah. bouncing is not as bad as like uncatchable. Uh, right. Hitting a cameraman is worse than bouncing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Right. laughs> like, I'm just afraid. Like, I just don't want to be on that list of people, but I should do it. But do you, do you guys think you could kick a field goal? No. No. No, I can't. No way. From how far? Uh, any length you, you no want. No way. I, I, I don't think. I think that's probably the hardest thing. You don't think like maybe, maybe like the, maybe like the, no. Five yard line. I line? think I think to even get it that high, I think that's a skill that people you have to have that skill. Yeah, I mean, if I had the Tom Dempsey like half a foot steel plate, right? Shoe, yeah, 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 yeah. right? Maybe, right. but just a normal like shoe. This no past way. weekend, I think somebody hit a sixty-two. Uh, the yeah, but you're an NFL player. Yeah, they just no. I know what I'm saying I'm just saying yeah. that's amazing. They yeah. just they just made it. But it, it, remember the guys would kick barefoot. Yes, those lunatics. Yeah, be like snowing. Like, who sure. thought I'd be better with kicking this barefoot, dude? I cannot believe the Cardinals beat the Cowboys. I know, dude. It makes yeah. It, it's 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 uh. That was I, it. Sixty two. Yeah. Dude, what about the Dolphins scoring seventy points? That Holy was wild. and they Smug. took a knee, or they could have broke the all-time record. What'd you think about that? Record. What'd you think about the knee? You know what? I could have went either way on that one because look, you, you're going to let up now. You could have let up at 55. You know what I mean? Like, you still went to 70. I mean, granted, it was like you're not going to give the ball over and this is the end of the game. But, like, I think. You I, let, I personally think he should have went for it. Because why not let your team go and say they have the all time record? Right. I know. You know, it's the all time. Not know, like the single season. I get it. The all, all time. time. They've, they've been playing football for like 120 years. What yeah. is the all time record? Is it 71? 70. 70. 70. I think it's 70. If I, whatever it was, a field goal would have been the all-time record. It was 72. Wow. 72, okay. They had 70, so the field goal would have broken by one. Now, I mean, let me ask you this. What did they really do? I know it's out of etiquette and, like, kind of professionalism and respect and everything, but, like, they could have kicked that field goal. Yeah, I agree Right, with you. so they could have kicked it. So everyone knows they could have kicked it. Yeah. Right? They're there. They, they could have kicked it. So the team's not like we did any better just because they didn't kick that. Yes, it's I just mean. that they're the footnote now in the books. You know what I mean? So they spared them to, as being a statistic, but really the morale is already depleted when you when you start to hit the high 60s. I got to be honest with all the evolutions in sports with baseball changing and everything, we should be done with the field goals in football. It's not football. Make field goal kicking another sport. That's what Larry David said. I Did think. he say that? Yeah, I think yeah so. make field goal kicking another sport. Don't. I just think football is football. Score the touchdown, safeties. You can get points that way, fine. But the kicking is like why well, is the this only, still the part only of the part sport? That's foot. <laughs> why is the part? 
Why is this part of the sport? Yeah, I would what, do you, what do you agree? What do you I think? would love for them to get rid of punting as well. So they always had to go for it on fourth. Yes. Down. I love that. Yes. I, I just I think it would be that. such a different game, a more interesting game. Do you I think love that, it. that because because listen, scores would go They put I mean, they put they changed baseball rules radically. I mean the extra yeah. inning game, now guy starts on second, the pitch clock. So those are big, big the the no DH in the national league, uh in the uh DHs in both leagues now, pitchers don't bat. Like those are radical rule shifts. They could shift, they could do that in yeah. the NFL. Yeah, but they the should. NFL's attendance isn't dwindling. Like MLB, they needed to do something needed nobody was watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is still making money. They should just all put first team to seventy every game. Every, yes, <laughs> no punts. First team to seventy every game. Every single game. I tell you, I think that the kicker in football, and I could be wrong. We should ask a kicker. I know, I, but I think that might be the most posh job in, in all professional. Until sports. you miss. Oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> it's a yeah, heavy you, duty. It's like, it's like the you closer in baseball. I disagree. But I mean, I mean, I like, you're not getting think, beat up. You could play till you, you could kick ball till you're like 50 years old. I think the closer in baseball is more posh. You get paid big money. The kickers until don't get paid it. big money until you blow it. Yeah. Who had a better life and than Mariano Rivera? All the money, all the fame, unanimous Hall of Famer. Pitched, but he's pitched the about, number one closer pitched of all about time. six minutes a day. Yeah. Pitched about six minutes. Starting pitchers have a real plush job. There's not really any pressure, and you work like five every five days. Yeah, you know, after you pitch, whether you get knocked down the first inning or pitch a no-hitter, you can get fucking wasted that night. Well, all, you are all, not going in the game for five days. All they do is they they, like, at, they get the ice, then like the next day they run the outfield, the next day they throw a little, yeah. next day they rest, next day they pitch. They got to go like five innings Nowadays, it used to be they have to go like seven or eight. Now they go like five, give up a hit, a couple runs. It's true. That's it. It's true. But if you if you if you whittle down how much a kicker is on field too, I mean he's 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 kicking once a week, and he's kicking maybe you know he could kick anywhere from zero. What do you think's the worst? Zero job? to five times he kicks his leg, and that's it. What do you think's the worst job? The worst job in sports being a catcher in baseball or running back in football? Oof. Which one sucks worse? Because uh, those I, two are the worst. They're the worst. Well, ones. It used to be when we were kids, running back was like the number one position to have in football. Remember, all the stars were running backs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Emmitt Smith. And, and then guys, they just yeah. wore them out. Yeah. And then they realized, hey, we can just get anyone that can run kind of fast as as yeah. for three yeah. yards. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I, I I think being a catcher is a no win situation, man. <sighs> Dude, that's that's three. That's, they, they used to call the, the 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 pads the tools of ignorance. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's think about it, right? It's 162 games. It's three and a half hours a game squatting, squatting, and you're you and you feel this. That's every you're that's every one of yeah, them. Yeah, foul balls off your mask, uh, off your nuts. Yes, all oh, the pads. It sucks. Also, just the level of focus you need to have as a pitcher and catcher. Not that you don't have to have it as another, you know. But like, I mean, a right fielder, like he's not he's not locked in. He should be, but I'm saying like the catcher no. needs to be locked there's in. A, there's 90 mile an hour balls. He's calling the game. Hurt your hand if a guy's throwing 100 miles an hour. Hurt your hand every time you, you have to call him. every pitch. You have to know. You have to think the whole game. I'll tell you. I just thought of it. The easiest job in sports, DH. Yes, yeah. DH is the easiest. That's the you easiest get to do job. exactly what you want to do anyway. Just hit. Just yeah, hit. That's it. <laughs> just hit. Yeah, no that's one wants it. to play the field. Yeah. yeah. Just hit. They say so. The twenty worst jobs in sports. Pimpy pulled it up. We have the football laundry specialist. This is number twenty. Um, teammate of AJ Przinsky. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess. I guess they didn't like it. Yeah. Oh, sports blocks. What's number one? Let's go to number one. I like to see what just, what do they think the worst one is? Yankee Stadium custodian is number two. Youth football ref. Yeah, that does suck. A youth football ref. Yeah, now you, as your daughter's old enough to play sports? My my eight-year-old plays, uh, she, she was on uh, uh, track, but then she played basketball, but she didn't like basketball. So yeah, she's my daughter playing. was pretty good at basketball, and I just re really, really, really just didn't say a thing. No, right? Yeah. You can't. It's just like, because I, first of all, to the coaching, hey, I can coach my kid and like a couple of her friends. Yeah. I don't like everybody's kid, man. That's just, yeah. right. so God bless these people. Yeah. Right. And then the referees, they're why they making eight bucks an hour. Like, we can get, get on these people. And it's like, it's, it's I mean, it's, it's women, it's girls basketball. It's like, we can all just relax. Yeah. Let the ladies play. Some right. people lose their minds. It's like they're 13 years old. It's, it's, yeah. This is like for the middle school semifinals. Take it easy. I oh, know. yeah. My <laughs> niece plays flag football, 
and it's competitive and she's on traveling teams and she's like a quarterback and everything and i she they've had instances where like the two other like the coaches are like neck near brawling not even the parents so near stupid. brawling on the on the field yeah yeah it's yeah, wild it's, it's 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 dumb i i don't i don't i'm not that kind of parent i'm like whatever my kids want to do i'm like dude like you said we're all kids we're all going to be in chinese prison camps anyway <laughs> what's the difference <laughs> you know what's the difference man <laughs> I, I, you're wearing a corduroy hat too i didn't notice this oh yeah yeah you were wearing it last episode no i switched okay we, our, tried, our to, last we, tried, guest, to, we tried to switch so it doesn't feel like the same episode. our last guest rob eiler uh from the uh from the sopranos was wearing a corduroy san diego padres hat i thought it was nice that's what we're going to get to in baseball corduroy uniforms oof uh Tim's the king of the corduroys Corduroy Hell King. Yeah. Isn't Where that what Costanza tried to do on Seinfeld? And he, it tried was too to make him he tried to do all cotton. <laughs> he tried to do all cotton, and then yeah. every and they all shrank, and then everyone was on the field uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, let's. Uh, what do you need to plug? I know the special and everything else you want to uh, do. The special uh, on all things comedy, Bart Nick at Killing in Chicago. Thank you guys for showing it. I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, I, I, I'm really happy with it. Thank God. Yeah. Awesome. Maybe the worst when you're not happy with it. Yeah. And uh, as far as movies go, I'm in uh, Old dads with bill burr bobby carnavalli yeah low keem i have a great scene with uh, bobby carnavalli and he was my favorite actor under 70 yes so. oh that's awesome he's great bobby carnavalli yeah. he's the, he's the he does best. look like a like a fun dude he's the coolest guy Genuine man guy. Yeah, he's yeah. the coolest guy so we got that and if you like hockey listen to my podcast puck off puck off baby puck great off. name and then on then it's killing in chicago and they can find it on all things comedy's youtube page yeah. i'm joe Barton. if you it, it, there's a link on my website if it gets confusing Okay, there you man. go, baby. Yes. That's my dad throwing out the garbage right at the end of the podcast. <laughs> right at the church. I though. just want to thank you guys so much for having me of on. Of course. Thank oh, you dude, for coming on, man. You're great. Thank you for coming on. It's so much fun. <laughs> I love yeah. catching up with you. I Seriously. love learning about your heart attack. I know. I, I, I could do five hours on just all my medical problems. <laughs> <laughs> well, doors open. Anytime you want to come That's back. Yeah, baby. You. Love you, buddy. Love you. Love you, too. Don't be a fake. Don't be a flake. Don't run away from your feelings, baby.